Hi everybody, welcome to Art Day. Today I'm having a time-lapsed video for you with a voiceover. One reason being that this project uh, took me almost six hours to complete. And also uh, I had the kids around when I was filming. You will see Emma's hand later. And uh, I didn't want to record her on, on video. I do have permission uh, to share this artwork which is a portrait of the twins um, made into an advent calendar for their mom however we want to make sure that um, they are not on the web with their personality and everything so here we go. I did uh, take two photos uh, that Jan had provided me with and uh, sketched them out on watercolor paper, uh, inked the lines and then I started watercoloring. I chose the Caran uh, water soluble crayons for the skin tone and uh, the Schmincke Academy watercolors for uh, anything else uh, on, on this front of the soon-to-be advent calendar and the reason was I don't really have a nice skin tone with the watercolors and I uh, just like that muted flesh tone of the crayons very much so I could have mixed my own um, skin tone sure uh, but I kind of felt like, okay, I want to go for pure colors and only mix them on the paper. And uh, therefore, I took the easy way out and uh, used my crayons. Now, I did introduce a little bit of magenta and um, purple onto the skin. It might look a little weird at this point. Um, but this is not supposed to be a realistic kind of a painting, just a very colorful one. And choosing different, maybe a little more unusual colors for shading on skin is something that I really like to do to just um, make a painting or portrait look quite vivid. I also used the Caran uh crayons for a very pale Sahara yellow. Um, the, the twins are very blonde. Emma even more so than Hannes. She's like almost white blonde. She has very very little darker hair like a solid blonde. She's almost a white blonde. Very cute. So I again didn't have a shade in my watercolors that would be um, working. I did put a little bit of cadmium yellow on top just for the shading bits here and also a little bit of uh, I think it's called Naples yellow. I don't actually remember the name just for the shading but on the lighter parts I kept the pale yellow crayon um, and I wouldn't have been able to uh, make her hair that light with just my watercolors. So for the table that she's grabbing, uh, I chose a little bit of Van Dyke brown and a little bit of sepia and a little bit of uh, dark indigo. And she in the photo, she's wearing a white shirt. So I'm giving her a little bit of a light gray uh, shadow part. I toned it down quite a bit. I darkened things because I want to have a little bit of contrast. Um, and I don't want to have it look like empty space in the end because I'm also painting the background and Hannes on the left has no white um, bits there on his clothes. So I wanted to bring the two together and therefore I darkened up her shirt quite a bit. Now they have really like husky steel blue eyes. I darkened them a little bit, um, went with Prussian blue and indigo just to 
make them pop a little more. That's a little more of an artistic license, I'd say. So um, I just adjusted the color a little bit to be a, kind of a bit darker because the background is going to be a night sky and I wanted to bring those two items together. Well, for her tongue that she can touch her nose with, she's the only one who can do that, um, I chose a mixture of different kinds of reds, some cooler ones, some warmer ones, a little bit of purple for the shadows and um, then I did let that part dry, went back to the skin, adjusted my lights and darks and uh, just pretty much brought everything together there. Uh, I think the photo we chose for her to be the reference um, is really cute. It, it shows her pe personality so um, that was awesome and I giggled quite a bit while I was painting her. See there I'm dropping in uh, a bit of the indigo, drying things up. I know that watercolor dries lighter so I didn't worry when I put down the indigo. I knew that it would just be very light in the end and the pupil would be quite uh, visible with my ink lines. Added some more shadows around her hands, just uh, upping the contrast a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, it, then I just uh, went back to the eyes, another uh, layer of blue, uh, shading the white of the eyes with a tiny little bit of gray, the same I used for the shirt. It's actually a Payne's gray, so it has a bluish tint, which um, again works really well with the eye color and the soon to be painted in background. Another layer of shading for the tongue and uh, the lips, just dabbing in some color there and uh, yeah, getting, getting closer to make it look real and have a nice amount of contrast. Uh, there. I'm going to adjust her left side of the face later on, uh, bringing in a little more yellow. The blue did work really well, or the purple tone, I should say, but in comparison to uh, Hannah's skin, it looked a little too weird. So I'm going to adjust that later. Um, currently, I'm just adding in more color, shading her. Uh, a little more but I'm gonna dial that back later on in the video you will see. So I'm just smoothing out the skin going over it not having it look too blotchy and, and I do that by just having a damp brush and just going over the layers that I already painted and uh, that I think works really well. A little bit of indigo and a little bit of Prussian blue for the eyelids just to make her eyes pop. And uh, then I did let it dry for a second, went uh, to the loo <laughs> and I forgot to cut that footage. Oh no! Oh gosh, unbelievable. I went through this footage and I did miss that. So I came back and uh, then I did add some more of the paints gray just to um, have the have the illusion of um, depth for her. So I pushed back her left shoulder and uh, did that by adding just a tiny little bit of Payne's gray. Then she was done, um, at least for the watercolors, and I went on to Hannah's face. And I used the same flesh tone crayon that I had used on Emma's face. 
<clears throat> and I'm also going to use the same pale yellow for his hair. Now he is a tiny little bit darker when it comes to the kind of blonde hair he has but I nevertheless use that pale um, yellow as a base. I went over the crayon with a flesh tone. I went over it with Naples yellow, which is kind of a flesh tony um, uh, shade, and I like to use that a lot. But it's it sometimes can be a little too. I want to say yellow or orange. Um, I'm mo often using a pink uh, with it, as I do here. I'm using reds and magentas just to um, let it bleed into the Naples yellow. <clears throat> but um, when I want to use more of a realistic kind of a color for the skin tone, I definitely want the crayon underneath. Here's the pale blonde, again going over his hair. And like I said, he's a little darker with the blonde, so I'm going to add a bit of a um, almost grayish blue mix. So there I used Payne's Gray and um, I think it was Indigo for that, but I'm gonna let the yellow dry for a bit and just color in his jacket and shirt and such. And uh, I chose a dark blue, so I think that is indigo. And I chose the Payne's Gray for uh, the gray parts. And um, that just, works very well because I have color repetition for one so you find the same kind of shade in the eyes of the twins in the soon-to-be colored background and in Hannes's clothes so all the parts of the painting fits together very well um, it also calms down the um, picture or the painting quite a bit. Um, Emma's tongue is pretty much the focal point when it comes to the color choices. All the other colors are um, repeated somewhere. I mean, I'm going to use the same reds for Hannes's um, lips and tongue, but they're way more pronounced with Emma, so this is kind of the focal point when it comes to the color. All the other colors stand back a bit. Um, they move into the background, though there are definitely warm shades too but um, that red just stands out. So here is a little bit of a Payne's Gray. Okay, I didn't use indigo, just the Payne's Gray. And I watered it down quite a bit and then spread um, the paint that I had put down too, um, so that uh, it's a little darker. I went over it with the pale yellow again, just to soften um, the difference between the blonde and the gray. And then I moved on to the eyes, again gave it the same treatment uh, as I had with Emma, so a little bit of cyan, a little bit of Prussian blue and a little bit of indigo. Letting that dry again, just let it sit for a second. Um, to be able to put down the next layer. And of course, I forgot to cut another part. I think I just sat there and uh, took photos <laughs> and uh, sent the progress to Jörn and then I went on with more paint. So on to the mouth. Again, the same reds I used for Emma's uh, mouth and I added a little more purple to his tongue just to darken up uh, the inner parts of the mouth because like that, uh, like it is now, it looks really weird. <laughs> Um, and there is quite a bit of a shadow in his mouth there, so 
I darkened that with a little more purple and indigo than I had used on Emma, but then again, she doesn't have her mouth open or it is just filled with all the tongue there. So there we go. Toning that down quite a bit, adding a shadow and uh, that way adding depth to the painting or the, the perception of depth and yeah, you know, all the things. <laughs> Touching up around his nose again, um, another layer of shadow. And then I went over everything with my uh, Naples yellow again, because it was a little too magenta pinkish for me. I mean, I really like the color for shading and um, it also implies, okay, it's cold outside. They're wearing their big jackets and they have a little pink cheeks and such, but um, it couldn't be too much. And th this is where I move on to Emma's left-hand side of the face, adding a little more yellow, toning down that purple a little bit, like I had mentioned before. And then I went on for the background. I uh, did water the whole background section because I wanted the paint to really flow and uh, not be as quote-unquote restricted with the way it spreads around the paper than I had used um, on the twins themselves. I wanted to have a little bit of a difference there and uh, make the background a little more flowy just to pull the twins even more into the foreground and the, well, background into the background. It's a night sky. I'm going to add what you could interpret as stars or um, snowflakes. And since this is an advent calendar, I think it's a combination of both. There's a few um, bigger drops of white paint that I'm going to add and a few smaller ones. So one of them could be stars and the bigger ones maybe could be snowflakes. But I went in with uh, indigo first. So the first color I had used on the background is uh, Prussian blue. And then I went in with my indigo paint just to um, darken the upper part of the sky. Uh, the lower part I'm adding a second layer of Prussian blue because I want it to be a little lighter towards the lower part of the painting and uh, then I dried everything as you can see <coughs> and then I went in with one of these um, special brushes those feathery brushes and I sprinkled some white paint to well make either stars or snowflakes or both I think it's both and uh, then I did let that dry for a second before hitting it with a blow dryer because I didn't want to have the color running, the, the white paint, and make it look like, say, a comet or something. I didn't want that. So I waited for a second, let a little bit of water uh, subside, and then I hit it with my blow dryer. On to the um, gel pens. I used this very light blue to add a few lines and dots at the irises because they have quite the patterned eye. Um, you can't really see it here but when you look at it close up um, you can see the difference. A um, little bit of white for a reflection in their eyes. And then I went on to Hannah's teeth, just cleaned up those edges, did whiten them where I had a little bit of watercolor go where it's not supposed to go. I cleaned up my ink lines and uh, darkened the eyelashes because when I paint with watercolors on top of ink, 
uh, marker it gets kind of milky um, the great contrast is gone so I went over some of the lines again where I thought okay this is um, where I need the contrast and that always is eyelashes for me and the outline of the face a little bit uh, on the fingers too uh, drawing in some wrinkles there just to well have it still look cartoony but not as much same goes for Hannes went over the lines with my Copic marker multi-liner uh, drawing in his eyelashes again and the outlines of his face once more just to well have a little bit of emphasis on it and make it pop so that was the painting process after that uh, I did let the painting dry for about 15 minutes and then I did cut it from the pad and started measuring the 24 doors that will be well in the in the calendar uh, I did leave I think it was two centimeters of a border all around because that, that is where I had planned to glue down um, the edges of the painting so I didn't want to have the doors be too close to the borders um, and I thought well two centimeters is a is a great thing also it did work really well with the measurements um, because that left me with so the whole thing is 30 by 40 and uh, with the two centimeters on each side it is 36 by 26 centimeters that um, I could use and divide it by four rows and six columns I had five by five centimeter doors so I did uh, draw them in um, and uh, then started also cutting them so it takes a while this took actually the longest I think um, drawing and cutting all of the doors uh, I think it took maybe like 10 minutes longer than actually painting the front but um, you just got to take your time and I didn't stress myself I didn't hurry uh, I had podcasts um, with me listening to them while I did paint and put in the lines and cut those lines and I think it's important particularly in that step here to just take your time um, I then <coughs> excuse me Whew. I, I made sure that I really had 24 um, doors because the, the advent calendar that Jörn and I made for ourselves has bags and we miscounted and it's 23 instead of 24 which I just realized I think last week when I did sort all of the bags and put that put them in boxes for us to pull out and not look where is bag number 11 in this whole pile of bags um, and I, then I realized oh um, we just have 23 but that's fine uh, Jan and I are going to have the Lego Dar Star Destroyer um, in our advent calendar we're gonna build that and I think it's fine that we're uh, building the Star Destroyer until the 23rd and on the 24th we're going to place it um, on the shelf so I guess that's okay but yeah uh, knowing that I had miscounted the bags for 
our own advent calendar. I counted again and again and again just to make sure, okay, this is really 24 um, little openings there that I can cut. And um, yeah, it so happens I counted correctly. So once I had that done, I did take an exacto knife and my metal ruler and did cut all of these doors. Um, here's the thing, I would have had no problem doing so would I not be disabled and have fatigued hands. So you will uh, see Jörn jump in and help me out with the cutting. And of course, also chatting with my friend group while I do so. And uh, I had to make sure to cut very slowly and be very precise uh, for me not to destroy the picture in front. So I did go over every line two to three times. And the corners where those cut lines met were the most difficult uh, points um, where I sometimes had to go over it maybe four or five times and then checking every so often um, that the pictures, uh, the picture in the front didn't rip. Uh, I did take another blade. Um, the other one wasn't that great from for the angle that I used or had to have. Um, and I did just take another blade that I have. So um, that worked really well. And uh, it was a little more comfortable for my hand to not get tired too much. Also, I didn't open the doors all the way and have that bend in the watercolor paper because um, I didn't want the doors to be glued uh, shut later on. I just wanted them to be uh, pretty much closing on themselves. Um, and this is where I mark the lines where Jan has to cut. <laughs> and that's there's he. He is helping because my hands got really tired and we just switched back and forth who is cutting the lines. Uh, he's unaware or he forgot that there's a camera rolling. So we'll, you will see the back of his head a lot and maybe not as much of what he is doing. But I guess you can still see the movement with his hand and once in a while he uh, has his uh, head at an angle where you can see what he's doing with his hand. But yeah, we just went forward there. So again, I had said I didn't bend the doors all the way open because I didn't want to have those creases yet. And I also didn't want to use any uh, glue or anything to close those doors and make all the pictures that the twins colors colored uh, invisible. I had the plan to use a little bit of washi tape on the front with um, the numbers written on them just to for one hold the doors shut so nobody can peek and also f for me to not have the uh, numbers written on the painting because I had thought um, since this advent calendar is for the mom of the twins she might want to keep the calendar or the, the picture the painting of the twins and not have the numbers there all the time. So I kept the opportunity or the option, I kept that open for her to decide if she wants to um, maybe frame the painting afterwards. So have all the doors closed uh, and have the washi tape removed and frame it behind glass or maybe not so I did want to leave that up to her and that is why I was that particular with the way I 
uh, for one cut the doors um, and also well prepared them to be opened and make it look like a flat painting actually so you will see that in a little bit when all the doors are cut and uh, see like here it's hard, the doors are hardly visible if you pop them in like back all the way y you can hardly see that there is an advent calendar happening it just looks like a portrait painting and I wanted to go make sure and keep it that way so that she can decide if she wants to well keep the picture have it framed or whatever and that is also a reason why I chose watercolors on watercolor paper and not have um, an advent calendar with sweets in them but with colored pictures from the twins so that she could maybe frame it and not have to have it put back into a box um, at the end of Christmas season or throw it away. So she can but it's her decision and she has the option of um, well having it framed and yep just as a picture of the, her kids. So uh, I took another break. Uh, Jan took over again, uh, helping me cut all the doors. And uh, it really was a strain on my hand and on his as well, because having to apply quite a bit of pressure, I mean, that uh, um, watercolor paper is thick. It's very sturdy, it has a lot of fiber, it doesn't really buckle a lot when you put quite a bit of water on it. So we really had to cut through a lot of layers of fiber there. <coughs> and it just is very strain straining um, onto our hands and wrists and it is very difficult for us to coordinate after a while. So. I was very glad that he could take over whenever my hands were not, uh, well, that good anymore and I couldn't control them as well anymore. You're almost done. There we are. So once I had everything cut, I did take a very light gray washi tape um, uh, roll and just cut tiny little pieces of and uh, glued the doors shut that way. Now washi tape is uh, removable without um, any residual glue or anything. I really like it for this uh, kind of thing that purpose and uh, I just went all over the doors and I tried to use locations or placements that did not take away from the portrait look of the advent calendar so I didn't for example place the washi tape just over somebody's eyes or the tongue I did kind of try to work around the main features of uh, both of the kids faces and I think I I was successful there um, also with the very light gray it fits with the colors that I used on the painting and it doesn't distract too much so I did look through my stash of washi tape and I do have a lot of different kinds of patterns and uh, some of them would be very weird looking or distracting. So I did uh, choose a rather light and muted kind of um, washi tape. So then I just proceeded writing down the numbers, jumping back and forth between Hannes and Emma. So Hannes has the odd numbers, Emma has the even numbers. 
and uh, just put the um, <coughs> numbers there. So this is Saturday, which is a couple of days after I painted uh, this piece. Uh, while I was painting, Jörn did look for uh, coloring pictures for kids that are Christmas related and uh, compiled them. I did put them uh, into these tiny five by five um, centimeter frames. I did use my Manga Studio um, software for that. Uh, did add the, all the coloring pictures there and there you can see Emma's hand and her mermaid because she's watching uh, what I'm doing and asks a lot of questions which was really cute and I separated the colorings into two piles one of them uh, were the paintings that or the drawings that Hannes colored the others were Emma's and I'm placing the respective coloring pieces behind their portraits. So anything that Emma colored will be behind her doors and same goes with Hannes. I did just use a little bit of tape to hold down those uh, colored pieces and I did adjust where they go, like with the angle and such. So once one of the doors is opened, uh, it looks really nice um, with uh, the colored pictures. Jan and I did help them with coloring because uh, these were very tiny pictures and the fine motor skills are still developing. So we uh, help them with the more fiddly things and with the bigger pictures they could just color on their own. Once I had all the pictures down, I used a little bit of crafting glue. It's a white glue um, that works really well with this particular kind of paper. So I just went all around uh, the frame. I did take a second uh, watercolor paper for the back. So you can see here, I'm just going all around, putting down a little bit of glue. And uh, then I just glued both of the pieces of paper together and I used some cloth pins to hold the paper together while the glue dries. And that pretty much ends my project. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and I'm going to see you in two weeks with a new project.